If you want the white race to survive, you're gonna have to do your part. They firebombed our house, and of course, there's a home invasion murder attempt on myself. The neo-Nazi groups Blood and Honor and Combat 18 are now considered terrorist entities in this country. In today's video, we'll be covering Alberta's supremacist and neo-Nazi gangs, the heart of Canada's supremacist movement. We'll take it from the start. Featuring their origins in Canada, the motives behind these groups, their evolution through time, their displays of violence, and how, according to authorities, they are now potentially threatening to overthrow the government. The first organized supremacist group in Canada can be traced back to 1921, when the well-known Ku Klux Klan's Canadian cell was founded, creating a movement that would evolve over time. A few weeks after its founding, supporters were already burning crosses, and less than a year later, in 1922, they set ablaze a Catholic college in Winnipeg, Manitoba, killing 10 innocent students that day. Through the following decades, a toxic blend of anti-Catholic, anti-Semitic, and xenophobic sentiment gained popularity, giving rise to new anti-immigrant groups. Burning crosses, demonstrations, and racist marches were becoming common until the government decided to intervene. In response, not only did they tighten their grip on the Ku Klux Klan and its counterparts, but in 1962, the government introduced immigration regulations that eliminated preferences for immigrants of European origin. Instead, a points-based system was implemented, prioritizing skilled labor. The impact made two changes. Canada's immigrant population became more diverse, and the violent activities of hate groups somewhat subsided. However, experts now explain that these groups never truly died. They merely adapted, tightened their circles, and operated secretively behind closed doors. Confirming this, in 1990, they made their comeback in Alberta and shook the entire country. Led by the Canadian Aryan Nation's leader, Terry Long, hundreds of white supremacist supporters marched through rural Alberta, viciously resounding their hate message. Not only did they display swastikas and even harass anti-racism supporters, but they also burned a colossal 30-foot high cross and a symbolic gesture that reignited and ushered hate into the modern era. But this was more than a propagation of extreme ideologies. It was the birth of something far more sinister and deadly. Hate motivated organized crime. From the 1990s onward, hate slowly morphed into meticulously planned murder plots and what some claim is anti-government mutiny. Among the earliest groups to embrace this transition was the White Boy Posse Gang. Founded in 2003 by its notorious leader, Mike, the White Boy Posse Gang stood apart from its street-level counterparts. Operating in Alberta, this race-based gang established strict criteria for membership. It was essential to be white, to even be considered a hangaround. Initiated members, referred to as the fully patched, adorned themselves with typical neo-Nazi tattoos, proudly displaying swastikas and other symbols of the Third Reich. While police records connect the group to various criminal activities, including drug trafficking, extortion, and involvement in the sex trade, their notorious reputation stemmed from their relentless violence against people of color, an activity they seem to have simply loved. Fast forward two decades, and the White Boy Posse gang still lurks in the shadows of Alberta, Saskatchewan, and the Northwest Territories. While some gang experts argue that the group has lost most of its former prominence, it can't be ignored that they're reported to boast a sizable membership of approximately 500 individuals and thousands of associates. They're even alleged by authorities to be tied to powerful entities like the Hells Angels and the Red Alert Gang. The authorities have issued a grave warning. Their interactions with the Red Alert, a mainly Aboriginal gang, are strictly business, but they remain unflinching in their readiness to torment and inflict fatal harm upon people of colour. Barely three years later, still in the murky shadows of Alberta, Canada, the year 2006 witnessed the birth of yet another neo-Nazi criminal organisation, the Aryan Guard. Founded by a notorious figure named Kyle McKee, often referred to by law enforcement as a micro -fuhrer. One constable from Edmonton's hate crime unit astutely remarked, for a man who only weighs 130 pounds, McKee carries a lot of weight. This observation was in reference to photographs of him proudly holding heavy-duty firearms standing defiantly in front of towering Nazi flags. Kyle McKee, a product of the system, had immersed himself in the realm of neo-Nazism from a young age. His turbulent childhood saw him shuffle between foster care and jails, 
until he eventually relocated from Ontario to Calgary, where he would establish the Aryan Guard. According to a police officer familiar with the organization, McKee possessed all the prerequisite traits of a neo-Nazi leader. He sported a shaved head, a figure covered in tattoos, and donned all-black attire paired with combat boots. Adorning his body were unmistakable markings, a massive white power tattoo emblazoned across his chest, a swastika on his left hand, kill on one leg, and Jews on the other. Despite his appeared interest in violence, insider accounts suggested that McKee possessed a charismatic charm and proved to be a master recruiter. He was known to preach his beliefs to anyone who would listen going so far as to offer accommodation in his own apartment to new recruits. A journalist from the National Post, who had the opportunity to interview McKee, described him as a true believer, who sincerely believed his actions were justified. The journalist reported, To him, it was all politics, and violence was politics to him. In line with his convictions, McKee and other members of the Aryan Guard perpetrated a shocking incident. They confronted and assaulted two Indian men as they left an East Edmonton liquor store. According to the victim's accounts, one of them was struck on the back of the head with a full bottle of alcohol, followed by being stabbed with a broken glass. The other victim claimed to have been bitten during the assault. The Aryan Guard proved to be a menacing group, perpetrating numerous incidents of violence. Four members were arrested for vandalism, a 17-year-old assaulted a Japanese woman leaving a Calgary bar, and in November 2009, Two homemade bombs were discovered at the doorstep of a fellow member's residence, while he and his four children were inside. Thankfully, the police intercepted the devices just before they could detonate, leading to McKee being charged with attempted murder. However, the charge was later dropped after he pleaded guilty to manufacturing the explosives. Unsurprisingly, the Aryan Guard was plagued by internal strife and infighting. Mere weeks after the failed bomb attempt in 2009 announced its dissolution, signaling the end of its life. Even with the fall of the Aryan Guard criminal organization, Kyle McKee still refused to surrender his beliefs. Fueled by his convictions, he forged alliances with other similar groups, co-founding yet another entity known as Blood and Honor Canada. Many argued that this new organization surpassed all previous supremacist groups in its deadly impact. The name Blood and Honor carries a notorious legacy, tracing its roots back to the United Kingdom. Founded in 1987 by Ian Stewart and Nikki Crane, the organization initially functioned as a neo-Nazi music promotion network and a right-wing extremist political group. However, as time passed, Blood and Honor underwent a sinister transformation, morphing into a ruthless organization with its enforcement wing known as Combat 18, a militarized, ultra-violent neo-Nazi faction. While the extent of McKee's ties to the parent branch in the UK remains uncertain, authorities assert that he held a prominent position within the Canadian chapter of Blood and Honor, occasionally referred to as Code 28, derived from the second and eighth letters of the Latin alphabet, B and H. True to their intentions, Blood and Honor wasted no time in continuing the campaign, where the Aryan Guard had left off. As the years rolled on, hate crimes in Canada surged, with stack hand data revealing a steady increase. Racist marches, rallies, assaults, and harassment plagued the nation, drawing particular attention to the city of Calgary and Alberta in general, as the main areas in Canada where racist demonstrations of such magnitude were taking place. Alberta earned the title of the center of the country's neo-Nazi movement, a distinction that cast a shadow over the province. In 2015, the Center of Hate, Bias and Extremism conducted a national study on right-wing extremist groups in Canada, reaffirming the severity of the situation. Counter-terrorism reports unveiled a troubling reality. There were approximately 100 alt-right or white supremacist groups operating within the country, with Alberta serving as home to around 15% of them. But most importantly, they issued a dire warning that a more radical and future-defining evolution was taking place within right-wing extremism, one that could possibly topple the country. Seemingly frustrated that most people weren't paying attention to the rallies and demonstrations, Intel revealed that weapons were being secretly acquired with the intent of sparking a civil war. But the threat extended beyond warfare. Reports hinted at plans to poison water supplies and derail trains resulting in catastrophic loss of life. Derail some trains, kill some people, and poison some water supplies. You better be ready to do those things. If not, then you're not gonna be ready for what's coming. 
Throughout the decade so far, we have witnessed the evolution of groups going from political parties to downright criminal organizations, and as it turns out, there is no single ideology motivating them. However, they do seem to have a shared framework of beliefs, ideas, concepts, and literature that cuts across them. It seems that racism serves as a central theme, with some factions claiming to fight for the preservation of cultural purity. To these individuals, those from different cultures are simply vermin that must be eradicated. In many cases, referring to people of color as rats. Many members are frustrated by their government's leniency towards immigrants. For context, Stack Han reports that Canada is home to more than 11 million people of color in 2023. Together with indigenous people, they make up over 30% of the entire population and it's only growing. Due to reasons like this, some supremacist movements are now advocating for the violent overthrow of the system and the creation of the totalitarian Aryan nation. One such movement, Blaise, is currently at the front line of such a revolution. Blaze is a group dedicated to accelerating the collapse of the government by inciting a civil war through the use of what the authorities call terrorist attacks. If you want the white race to survive, you're gonna have to do your part. Alarming reports even suggest that some members of these groups may have connections within the military, raising further concerns about the potential for coordinated acts of violence. Within the ideology of groups like Blaze, the foundation lies in viewing society as degenerate and corrupt. Their ultimate objective is reported to be using violence to hasten societal collapse in order to set the stage for the creation of a new society. Something worth mentioning is that in an era dominated by social media, the reach and influence of groups like this have expanded exponentially. Not only are these groups able to recruit more individuals into their ranks, but they have also grown bolder in their actions and messaging amplifying the sense of fear and urgency. In August 2022, the city of Calgary woke up to a chilling display of white supremacist media. A banner adorned with the phrase coined by one of America's most infamous white supremacists, David Lane, was prominently hung over a busy street. It read, We must secure the existence of our race and a future for white children. This phrase, known as the 14 words, has since then become a rallying cry for militant white nationalists. As news of the banner spread, white nationalist social media channels claiming to operate in Alberta quickly shared images of the display. The Wild Rose Active Club, a group known for its extremist views, proudly claimed responsibility for the stunt. On their social media platforms, they boldly declared their intention to take public space and own it indefinitely without conceding or capitulating. Their online presence featured quotes from Adolf Hitler and other fascists accompanied by images that included stickers bearing slogans like Stop White Replacement. The Wild Rose Active Club even proceeded to flood the streets of Calgary with neo-Nazi stickers, making them a constant source of concern for law enforcement. However, deeper investigations would soon reveal that this group was merely the least of their problems. While the Wild Rose Active Club may have captured public attention, a more sinister parent gang lurks beneath the surface, the Vinland Hammerskins. This notorious gang boasts members spread across multiple countries, including many in Europe and Australia, establishing itself as one of the largest and most active neo-Nazi groups in operation. According to the director of the Centre of Hate, Bias and Extremism, the Wild Rose Active Club is one of the many athletic clubs that have emerged throughout North America in recent years. These clubs operate under the coordination and influence of the Hammerskins an older gang notorious for a stained history of murders, arsons, and assaults. The director further explains that after decades of silence, it has been revived by what is now termed White Nationalism 3.0. The White Nationalism 3.0 style. Under their new banner, the Hammerskins are reportedly now recruiting a new breed of white supremacist referred to as the Cultured Thugs. A Cultured Thug is a specific archetype, someone who embodies physical strength lethal training, and an intellectual engagement with the philosophy of their movement. The gang employs refined tactics and strategies to entice young, isolated men with the promise of molding them into the ideal Aryan man. Back in 2022, operatives from antihate.ca bravely infiltrated the Vinland Hammerskins, unearthing valuable insights into their structure and operations. One officer was even able to land an in-face meeting at a bar with group representatives. 
This was the second step in a series of ideological checks before being granted access to an active club. The officer reported what he had heard, saying, What is your ideology? What books do you read? They wanted to know if there were any skills I possessed that could help with their propaganda. But most importantly, they wanted to know how often I worked out. Upon passing the interview, potential members are gradually brought into the fold. They forge connections with existing members, becoming involved in each other's lives, and meeting each other's families. This process eventually leads to an invitation to join Crew 38, the Vinland Hammerskins feeder club for potential future members. It is within the circle that individuals must prove their worth, demonstrating their dedication to the group's cause. Once deemed worthy, they earn a crossed hammer patch and attain full status as a Vinland Hammerskin. Besides military drills and strategy training, the Vinland Hammerskins also organize annual concerts called Hammerfests. These events serve as both showcase for white power music and recruitment tools. Niche bands such as Odin's Law and Nordwind take center stage, delivering messages aligned with the group's beliefs. That said, they are not for everybody. Attendance at these concerts follows a rigorous vetting process for those outside the Hammerskin social circles. Usually, new attendees are required to travel to a separate location for questioning before being informed of the actual concert venue. So far, the Canadian Anti-Hate Network has identified three men as the current senior members of the Vinland Hammerskins. Following their recent emergence, law enforcement agencies specializing in hate crimes have come to a defining realization. Former hate groups like the Orion Guard, Blood and Honor collapsed. Instead, according to authorities, they are convinced that some simply fused under one banner, possibly hoping to make a bigger impact on society. As always, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and want to see more like this in the future. Also comment down below, letting us know what you'd like to see next. Thanks for watching and have a good one.